Joining us now is Ojini Kaojiu Kwe with stories <laughs> trending around the world. <laughs> Hello, Jennings. Dr. Bati, why? Why do you have to yell like that? What happened this morning? There was a release in that. This man almost yeah. killed me this morning when he said Ganduje should not bother wearing Babariga. I was <laughs> laughing. Oh, I, I, honestly, I, was, I was dying inside. Baby, you were very calm. Yes, I Good morning, Ayo. How Good morning, are you? Energy. Good morning, Rufai. How Dr. are you this But he has a lot of bullets. <laughs> bullets. Yes. He's taking over. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In Nigeria, Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi, on the occasion of his 62nd birthday on Wednesday, visited the governor of Plato State, Caleb Mutfwang, to commiserate with the people of the state over recent killings of at least 300 people by terrorists. The former Anambra State governor also visited an IDP camp in the state where he donated 5 million naira. How did this happen? These are things we must look into. Nigerians must live at peace. Especially the less privileged Nigerians. Like I said, we want to create a Nigeria where a child of nobody will be somebody who will be able to live peacefully in a gainful, productive employment. Then, the governor of Bielsa State, Doyo Diri, unveiled a new transport scheme of 100 taxi cabs and six luxury buses on Wednesday in a bid to alleviate the suffering of commuters in the state. As a result of the full subsidy removal, the governor at the unveiling ceremony said the initiative was his administration's palliative to boost the transportation sector. By virtue of the new policies, that has led to the increase in transportation fares and by the multiplier effect and by implication, increase in the prices of foods, stuffs and every other thing. In Kenya, two people were killed on Wednesday in clashes between police and protesters in the city of Kishimu. Tear gas was also fired in the capital Nairobi and the coastal city of Mombasa at those protesting over the high cost of living in the wake of tax hikes introduced last month by President William Ruto. Schools in the country's two main cities and many businesses have remained closed as a three-day opposition protest kicked off with demonstrators confronting the police. Last week, at least 14 people died in protests. 10 were shot dead by police. Under sports, members of the Afghanistan national women's soccer team evacuated to Australia when the Taliban took over Afghanistan in 2021, attended the public training session of Morocco's Atlas Lionesses on Wednesday. Morocco is making its women's World Cup debut and is the first Arab nation to qualify for the tournament. The exiled Afghan players hope that the Atlas Lionesses' participation in the World Cup tournament will help further build the case that Muslim women belong in the sport. Finally, on our entertainment, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Harry and Meghan, are reportedly taking time apart to pursue peace following failed business deals, continued public disagreements with their family members, and public backlash of their media tour. An online news source, Radar Online, reported on Wednesday that the couple are considering a trial separation to rebuild their bond. Prince Harry is said to be planning a solo trip to Africa to film a new Netflix documentary. Well, let's begin what's trending. As the pump price of petrol continues to surge across the country, causing more uncertainty in many Nigerian households, the president of the Senate, Godswill Akpabio, on Tuesday announced that salaries of workers in the public sector will be reviewed as a way of cushioning the effect of petrol subsidy removal. Well, the Senate president made the announcement when he hosted the governor of Ekiti State, Abiodun Oyebanji, at his office in Abuja. Akbabio also stated that the country would not have survived the next few years if subsidy was still in place. With the stoppage of the first subsidy, imagine, look at the cooperation of Nigerians. Even Nigerians were tired of the first subsidy. 
and, and they weren't telling you. They were tired of the fuel subsidy. And they are prepared, they say, yes, so long as we have fuel to buy, it doesn't matter the amount, so long as government can also think of how to bring up policies that will reduce the suffering that people are passing through. I know a lot of things are in the offing. I would not say that, but I know that even the issue of uh, uh, salaries and wages will have to be reviewed in order to make sure that Nigerians uh, uh, have a, uh, a, a living wage. And, uh, you know, uh, what I, I mean by living wage is a wage that can feed your families and also have something left for the education of your children. Okay, this is refreshing to hear, but I mean, I don't know how many Nigerians will agree with him at this point now with no palliative in place. We want some sort of subsidy. Well, this was as the director of uh, media and publicity of the defunct Tinubu Shatima campaign organization, Bayo Nonuga, in a tweet, called on Nigerians to be patient with the Tinubu administration. Ononuga admitted that everyone, including those in the All Progressives Congress, are all feeling the heat <laughs> arising from the petrol subsidy removal. Well, let's take his tweet. He says, in this season of high fuel price, I want to plead with our people to exercise some patience. We are all jointly experiencing the pain. All those intemperate attacks against the new government of President Bola Tinubu should stop. Let's await the palliatives as his government has promised. Let's await the palliatives that will flow from each state as more money is channeled to them from the subsidy savings. We cannot go back to the hyper fraudulent subsidy regime where we were spending more money on petrol than on roads, education, and health. Well, I mean, by Ononuga, I don't know if it's everyone that is feeling the heat. So, I mean, it's he not kept a, on not begging everybody. I mean, no, I don't. no, no, it's not, it's not everyone. Why? I don't understand. They, they are not feeling the heat. <laughs> they are not. It's obvious. Wait, uh, let's. Okay. In the meantime, let me tell you what happened yesterday. Trekathon okay. was trending yesterday after a video showing more people than cars on major <laughs> roads around the Keja area of Lagos State began <laughs> circulating. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Have you seen this thing happen oh before? I mean, God. this is a computer village in the Keja. <laughs> Rufai. <laughs> please, please, Mr. Bayo Nuga should not come and tell us anything. They are not feeling the heat. But what I know, lawmakers got free 70 billion. They are not feeling the heat. They should speak for themselves. So why is Mr. Bayo Anonuga begging Nigerians now? Mm. No, no, he should not beg Nigerians. Please, he should leave Nigerians alone. They plunge Nigerians into this. The APC plunge Nigerians into this because of their terrible planning. I asked Professor Killa a very technical question this morning. I said, do you see rigor in the thinking of government? He said, no, no rigor. You know what that means? That's an indictment on government. You remove subsidy, no planning. There's no record that even the 8,000 you announced, when people showed you how funny your thoughts were, you had to bring it back and say you are reviewing. Till date, they've not finished reviewing. The meetings you ought to have with labor, the meeting have been stopped. Labor is a, a upset. Everybody is upset. Now you are saying you are begging. What are you begging? You say you are going to hit the ground running. Hit it running. What we expected President Tinubu and I keep saying to have done is, if you knew, you are going to remove subsidy of your inauguration speech. Once you won the election, you will have started planning for it. At least have a template document. If at least had that and he put it forward, now you are saying you are meeting with stakeholders. Why didn't you finish the meeting with stakeholders before you remove subsidy? So we, we've given ideas at nausea. But Mr. Bayan Onuga should not beg. I think Mr. Bayan Onuga should have begged the Igbos that he said that never. Should they put him out in Lagos politics again? And when he said all of those things, that people kicked against him, he said he had no apologies. So why is he begging now? And just have a right to ventilate. Mm. It's democracy, isn't it? Or do you want an authoritarian government? No, it's democracy. So he should not beg. He has no locals to beg. Mm. People are suffering, and we want them to give us thinking. Mm. But let me give solutions, because we still need to talk solutions and move forward. It is time for President Tinubu to bring out his ministers. Let's even have an economic planning team. That is it. Go back to that meeting with NLC so you are able to bring it out. Thirdly, the Senate president that is saying that uh, Nigeria, uh, this, he doesn't understand what people are going through. 
And it's not in the space that they are going to increase salary. He's not government. He's not of the executive arm. Mm. So he can just talk for the sake of talking. But Nigerians are faced with all of these challenges. The labor, the meeting with labor should continue in such a way that they should bring out a resolution as regards what will happen to minimum wage. And other plans that have not been able to effectively implement, they should look at it. Right. And Nigerians are waiting. Nigerians want the government to think for solutions. Right. Not telling us, uh, 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 beg. no, <laughs> Mr. Bayon Ongar should have begged when he said very incriminating things against a specific group of people well, after the elections, which are also part of the economic heartland in, in Lagos. Well, I, and I, please, part of the solutions well, too. Where is the train in Lagos? We talked about that. No, where is the we train? Maybe they say they launched right. a train. Yeah. When is it going to start? I think maybe if well, that one started, it will cushion the effect we, in Lagos. We talked about that. But you know that, uh, Rafai, the president uh, met with uh, Vice uh, President uh, Kashim Shetima and uh, Senate President Goswil Akbabio and some you know, other state governors as part of efforts to discuss the uh, you know, continued palliative conversations. The governor of Lagos State was in attendance, Imo State Governor, as well as uh, you know, um, Dakbo Abiodu. If I ask that question, what are these state governors doing? This is what they should be talking about when yes. they're, I mean, I hope this is what they talked about when they met with the president, especially in Lagos. We live in Lagos. Central What's Central. happening? What's happening with right. the train? Okay. If so I ask that you, question. Thank you. I mean, in the earlier stories, you had highlighted that the governor of Bayelsa State had also yes. provided a bus pal palliative. On the show, we talked about the governor of Borno State as well, who have, in their own way, responded at least immediately to the needs of their people. Mm -hmm. But there's a deafening silence from Lagos State. Where, which is the commercial capital of the country, where they have their internal, internally generated revenue is the highest in the country. Why is Governor Babajide Somolu not saying anything? We saw the Computer Village videos. This has hit Lagosians yes. and hit businesses in Lagos State, which is responsible for the taxes that the, governor, that the government looks to um, help to show up IGR. Why is the governor not saying anything? So it's one thing to go to Abuja to have meetings, which is good. We hope that the president would engage with you know, subnationals. But beyond that, the state can do something. It's often been said that there's so much attention on the, on the, on the federal, on the center, that we ignore the chief executive of state and yes. what they are doing in terms of palliatives. Has he met with business owners? Has he felt the policies of SMEs in, in Lagos State? Has, does he understand the reality and the sufferings of people in Lagos State? And what is his immediate response? He doesn't have to wait for the president before he acts. Absolutely. Dr. Bati. Okay, a couple of things. Number one, uh, Mr. Bayon Onuga mm -hmm. saying people should be patient and that we are all in this together. Well, indeed, we are all in this together because even when you are in government, you know, you are part of it. Everything has gone up. Everything has doubled. We all feel the pain. Mm -hmm. President uh, uh, Tinubu says it's like childbirth pain. And he says he's going to provide palliatives uh, to uh, minimize our suffering. So when Mr. Bayonanuga says people should be patient, the palliatives should come, he's not saying anything extraordinary or strange. What he's just saying is, that, okay, be patient. The same thing that the president has said. But our concern as Nigerians is that what we see in terms of approach is a lack of strategy, lack of innovation, lack of imagination. Shouldn't the palliatives have come first? Shouldn't the strategy have been properly defined first before we have this? The government must take responsibility for the poor implementation of policy. The government must step up its efforts. The childbirth pain that uh, President Tunumbu has identified and that uh, uh, Mr. Ononoga is echoing Yes, what is uh, what will be provided, you know, to reduce the pain that the people have been going through? And this point needs to be made, and it is as follows: that the period of campaign is over. Mm -hmm. It's no longer time for politicking, you know, uh, uh, campaign period talk. It's now time for governance, and that probably explains the shift in Mr. Bayo Nonoga's tone that look, it's time for governance, and it affects all of us. We have to govern this country and move uh, forward. Well, some people may disagree with what he says, but he talks about intemperate attacks on President Bola Tinubu. You know, well, you can react one way or the other, 
But this is a way in which, this is a situation in which we have found ourselves. So as a citizen, not talking as a, as a partisan spokesperson now, I don't see what is wrong with what he has said. As for uh, Gosula Pabio, well, Gosula Pabio was visited by uh, Governor Oyebanji of Ikiti State. I'm sure many people will visit him. You know, uh, after all, the Senate Majority Leader, Bamidele um, Okpayemi, Senator, you know, comes from uh, Ikiti State. And you also have in that same place the uh, uh, spokesperson of the Senate, uh, Yemi Adaramudu. He comes from uh, Ekiti State. And then I think you have, uh, you know, um, Cyril, yes, who is also uh, from uh, Ekiti State. So the governor went there and said, look, the people of Ekiti State, they are behind you. And uh, the uh, senior president, of course, reciprocated and said, oh, the people of Ekiti State, the land of knowledge, they are making significant uh, uh, contribution uh, to the uh, Senate. So it's some diplomatic talk there. I don't see what is wrong with that. But what I find curious is that cap on the head of uh, uh, <laughs> Senior President Goswil Akwabio, the interlocking chain, the mobile strip, uh, using that as a symbol to show his uh, commitment to the president. And we keep making the point, we don't want a national assembly where the chairman of the assembly and the speaker of the House of Reps you know, think that uh, they, they have a, 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 a place in the boys' quarters of uh, Azorok and that uh, the National Assembly is an extension. So this is the, 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 the problem, because he didn't just put that cap on. He did it deliberately. It's the Emilokan uh, uh, cap. I hope also that now that uh, the National Assembly is involved in the discussion about the palliatives, that uh, the chairman of the National Assembly who go there and make solid contributions, not to go there and be emilocoing all over the place. And anything that the uh, president says, he will say, yes, uh, uh, Mr. President, you are right. No. Mr. President. Your Lordship, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I got you there. Does he not? <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> anyway, but I've made my point. Well, you know, psychophancy should have its limits. <laughs> you know, the National Assembly should know that they have a job to do, not right. by using uh, fashion, you know, an <laughs> attitude to send, right. uh, you know, a message uh, about their loyalty. We are not interested in their loyalty. The loyalty that we are interested in is loyalty to the Nigerian people and the objective of good governance, well said, which I say should be the focus. Well said. Well, let's take another story. AGK Mesoma, the student from Anglican Girls Secondary School in Anambra State, who was accused of forging her unified tertiary matriculation examination on Wednesday, apologized to the Joint Admission and Matriculation Board for falsifying her result. Mesoma made the apology when she appeared before an ad hoc committee of the House of Representatives investigating the case. At the hearing, JAM Registrar Professor Ishak Oloyede insisted that Mesoma deliberately conspired with other actors to forge the result. Well, the 19-year-old student, however, pled for leniency for the ban imposed on her by the examination board to be lifted. Permit me to use this media to pen this letter of apology with a heavy heart. I humbly seek your forgiveness for the mistakes I've made and the pain I've caused. And by name, H.K. Major Mesoma, the young girl who was not celebrated for what appeared to be an exceptional unity and peace call. I deeply and sincerely admit that I ignorantly got my result, jam results from another portal, which was not jam portal. Well, I hope this will put the story to rest. The most important thing is that she gets uh, counseling, Ayo. Yes, yes. Well, yeah, I do agree that she should get counseling. But I do think that actions must have consequences. The reason why this is important is because it serves as a deterrent for yeah. future occurrences. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can take on the emotional aspect of this and listen to her apology. But in 2021, a certain John also had falsified his result from 380 to 265 mm -hmm. and also went through the same process that Mesoma did with the jam. Until jam then, he had even 
wanted to sue Jam for two billion naira in damages, and he found it then um, became clear that he had actually fought this result. I don't think it was done in ignorance. She had done this with intentions to deceive Jam and the people and well, to get the benefits. Said, yeah, yes, because said. of what if you, if you look at the trial. So yes, I do understand that there should be some form of counselling, but I do think if not, as in the words of Dr. Amadi, Nigeria would become a republic of forgery, whereby the only thing you do are the consequences for you to just apologise when you are caught out. Please let her face the consequences and let it serve as a deterrent to other young people in God Nigeria. Bless you, for that. Very God well bless said. you. Uh, Dr. Abati, just a few seconds so we can okay, take this Okay, I was slide. going to say that, mm -hmm. uh, look, uh, forgery is a felony. It's an offense yeah. punishable uh, by three years. Section 467 of the Criminal Code. And the young lady in question is an adult. She's 19. So it, there's a crime here. Yeah. But we don't know the extent to which the uh, JAM, Joint Admissions Matriculation Board, will take it. She and her com accomplices, uh, uh, you know, ipso facto, have a case to answer. All right. That's one. Two, this is a vindication of JAM under the uh, leadership of Professor Isiak Oluyede. The man has simply transformed JAM. This is the same man who caught uh, CBT centers who were introducing fraud into the admissions process. This is the same man who caught a staff who said the uh, snake swallowed money. I remember that. There are many people right. who have been sent to jail because they have been trying to compromise a uh, uh, jam. And it's good that Professor Isi Akoloyede and his team stood firm because when they came forward and they said, look, something is wrong here. This is not true. This is what our records say. All right. They've been vindicated. And I hope all those uh, public figures that came out and read ethnic meanings into this, all right. You know, would also come forward and apologize yes, and sir. say that now that they know the truth and that the lady has uh, admitted wrongdoing, that they too are sorry that they attacked and criticized Jam unfairly. All right, then. We'll take our final story. The spokesperson of the Nigerian police force, CSP Olumui Wa Adejobi, on Wednesday reacted to a trending video showing some students of Delta State University observing a gender switch day well to commemorate the day male students of the university dressed as their female classmates while the female students adorned male outfits <laughs> Oh, that's a boy, a beautiful boy. But well, reacting via Twitter, um, the police spokesperson said he will take action. Uh, Rufai, I mean, I don't know what action he will take, but I guess that there is a law in Nigeria that bans homosexuality or same-sex marriage. And um, But people are saying, what action are you going to take? I have my makeup artist, and she said she attended Del Su in 2016. And this thing was not going on, but it goes to show this whole, you know... <laughs> Gender. So, so, so it, we, we are accompanying a lot of cultures yes. that, um, and we're expressing them in very unguarded ways. Mm -hmm. I, I think this infiltration from the West in our society, it's got its damaging effect. We should watch it. This is not us as a people. Yes. And I'm taking it back at this. This is not us as a people, uh -huh. honestly. All right. I'm not sure I can really do much, but this is not us. Let us watch this. I, oh, this Dr. Matthew, you know, this acculturation that is happening, mm -hmm. it's, it's taking root and it's eating and killing the fabric of our society. Okay. Look at this one. Look at this one. Look <laughs> Dr. Matthew, are you okay? Okay, you've referred to the uh, Same-Sex uh, same Prohibition sex, yes. Act mm -hmm. of uh, 2014. Uh, but okay, maybe this will apply under Section 231 of mm -hmm. the Criminal Code. Maybe. If an indecent act, cross-dressing, will fall under indecent act, and the punishment for it is two years. These children have been sent to university to go and study. They are cross-dressing all over the place, and they say it's gender switching. That, that's against our laws. So what happened to Bobrisky and those who have made it? What happened to No, Bobrisky? you know that uh, you know, certain agencies of government have been uh, after them. But you know, this is, there's a law against uh, uh, immorality. Against indecency, this is uh, a case of indecency. And what is the policy of that university? Who is the vice chancellor of that university? Under whose watch are these students turning gender switching, cross dressing into a major event? 
when they are supposed <laughs> to be studying. Cultural day. Well, 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 all right. I hope we don't have time. So, thank you all for your great analysis on what's trending today. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.